not standing alone right now. We got Johnny Winter here, Highway 61. Will be with us momentarily here in the studio. Teddy Smith and Bob O'Brien. One of the greatest American blues guitar singers of all time. Next, Johnny Winter.
great. It's uh, it's always wonderful, and and it's great that you're here, part of WPAT here in New York City. Just want to let you people know you're the great one of the greatest blues guitar singers of all time, and it's a privilege to have you, Johnny, uh, right here, Johnny Winter, right here with Teddy Smith and Bob O'Brien. All right. So I know you were playing over at BB King's not too long ago. You have a couple more yeah. performances over there in the next week. Tell us about that experience, please. Oh, BB is always nice. People are real nice. It sounds good. And uh, you've uh, had some other uh, great things going on, like a new CD out there. Why don't you tell us about that as well? Yeah, well, it's, it's about a year old now. It's all that new, but it's the latest one. It's a uh, song that I was influenced by when I was first getting into music. What's great is that uh, Johnny Winter has recorded several Grammy-nominated blues album albums and continues and continues extensively to travel and doing some great things out there. So, uh, so tell us a little bit more about some of the great things you've done. I know you played with Bob Dylan. I know you've been playing in Woodstock. Anything you'd like to tell us our audience about tonight? Well, uh, you know, we just pretty much do the same thing every night. We play as good as we can. <laughs> and make everybody feel good and everybody happy. Exactly. I know when you... Um, you know, got involved in the business. It was uh, especially the time when you were involved with Columbia Records. That was a big moment for you, wasn't it? Oh, sure it was. Oh, definitely. In fact, uh, it was one of the biggest uh, moments of your life, if I'm not mistaken. Is that true? Yeah, well, actually, the, the most fun I ever had doing music was playing with Buddy Waters. Yeah, he's... That was uh, really thrill my head. But, go ahead, that was on Blue Sky. There was a subsidiary of Columbia. What was Muddy Waters like to work with? Well, he was very easy to work with. He was just, he was really a great guy. Great musician, great singer. And you played for quite some time with him. I know you uh, really were inspired by him and about a lot of the great people that you work with in this industry. Is that right? Yeah, I've been working with Muddy about five years till he severely passed away in 1983. Uh, uh, right. Now, how about some of your experience working with, let's say, uh, Bob Dylan, Ringo Starr, some of these people? Could you give us a little, a little background? Well, I, didn't work with Ringo. I didn't work with Ringo. Ed did. My brother did. I mean, Ed, Ed did rather. But your experience with Bob Dylan was quite extensive, wasn't it? Well, you know, I never really met him. We played for his his anniversary. I think his 40th anniversary. And uh, I never had a good chance to meet him. Though I love Bob Dylan. Now you have a. A great book out there that you wrote with uh, Mary Lou, right? Yeah, yeah, we sure do. Um, That's a really good book. Now, that, in that book, uh, it talks a lot about a lot of your great experiences uh, with Mary Lou Sullivan. What was it like writing that book with uh, Mary Lou Sullivan? How, how was that experience for you? Oh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. We spent several years with her doing interviews, and she went to a lot of different places that I at the end, she went to the hometown of Beaumont, Lima, Mississippi, where I lived when I was a kid, Austin, Texas. You know, all the horse. You know, she did a good job. I used to visit Beaumont, Texas quite frequently because I go to Houston and I worked in radio stations in Texas and Louisiana, a place called, uh, I guess you're familiar with, Oakdale or Ellick, Alexandria. Oh, yeah, sure. I know Alexandria. <laughs> yeah, I worked at some country radio station down there, and of course I would visit Beaumont you know, on weekends or head out in uh, your direction. Um, how often are you in Beaumont these days? Not very often. My folks are still alive, and I don't really know too many people down there anymore. I really have no reason to get back there. Now, uh, so I'm not like down there anymore. It was a good place to grow up, but there's no reason for me to go back. I heard you played the Bull Run in Shirley, Massachusetts once a year. Are you yeah, worked at a... sure did. In fact, I, yeah. I saw you there, by the way. You didn't know that, but I I worked at another radio station in Worcester County, Massachusetts, some time ago, and it was a pleasure seeing you over there, too, at the Bull Run. That's a great place. Yeah, it is a nice place. Um, anything you'd like to tell us more about uh, some of your, um, either your website or, uh, you know, how people can get tickets to uh, see you over at B.B. King's? Well, that's, that should be very hard. You can just... Uh, Get them online or go there and buy one. Now, uh, some of the other great people that you work with in this industry has been quite extensive. Uh, I know uh, with Jimi Hendrix comes to mind. What was it like with, the, yeah. with Jimi Hendrix? 
Uh, he was a great guitar player. He was one of my favorites, probably my favorite guitar player of all times. I, just, I love Jimmy. I had a lot of respect for him. Would you say he was the, uh, if you were to pick the number of one or two or three guitar players in the world, yeah, would you he, consider him one of them? Oh, yeah, definitely. He was just great. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you tonight. How's, uh, how's your brother? How's uh, Edgar? He's doing fine. I don't get to see him as much as I'd like to. He's in California and I live in, on the East Coast, so we don't get together that much. But just a few months ago, we did shows together for about a month. It was real nice. And uh, that's good. I, when you guys were growing up, was there any competition as, as kids? No, were, we, we all nah. worked together. We never competed. Right. And uh, I remember some time ago I saw that you were on a... Uh, a children's television show, I think, when you were like 10 years old or something like that. Yeah, that was Don Mahoney. <laughs> yeah, well, what was that like? You played a lot of music from, by, by, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, by the Everly Brothers. Is that correct? Yeah, we did, we did some Everly yeah. Brothers music. Yeah, well, that's good that uh, you're, you know, you're here with us tonight. Uh, so you're, you're certainly out there traveling, having a good time, and uh, you know, even with the Rolling Stones and some of the greatest things that you know, people that you play with, it's just a just a great pleasure to have you here. Well, wow, thank you. What else would you like to tell us? What you're doing up uh, up in Connecticut right now? Well, we're uh, we're actually in uh, Vermont tonight. We're in Burlington, Vermont, playing a show for a couple of hours. And uh, how about playing in Woodstock? I know you know, I know you remember those days. Could you give us a little oh. story about that? Uh, it was pretty much a mess. It was rainy and muddy, and nobody knew who was going on when. But it was still a great, a great festival. It was probably the biggest festival I've ever been. Right. I'm glad I got to do it, even though it was a mess. Well, when are you coming to New York? Do you have any plans? Or uh, next Tuesday, in the games. Why don't you come up here to the studio? I'd love to meet you. Maybe you could play live on the air for us. We'd love it. Oh, well, we'll have time to. We're pretty busy. Well, we like doing it because it's live, you know, it makes it more fun that way. By the way, if you happen to be, you know, when you're in New York, you got to stop by the Panini Grill, the South Street Ferry Terminal in Manhattan. Go down there and see Vinny. He's got the best paninis, the best Italian food ever. Oh, great. You like that one, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, listen, if you're just joining us, we have Johnny uh, Winner right here. He's one of the greatest uh, guitar players of all time, and... Uh, He's from Texas, and he's played with the late Muddy Waters and uh, other other great people. Anything you'd like to tell us about the Blues Foundation or the Hall of Fame? Oh, it's nice. I'm a, I'm a, got inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame two years ago. It was a big honor. Yeah, congratulations to you. I'm sure that well, was, I was the first first white man inducted into it. Must feel really good, doesn't it? Oh, it felt great. So now that uh, you're inducted into the Hall of Fame. What happens this year, 2013? Other things uh, going on in your life or your website or you're promoting other concerts or seeing playing with other great people? Oh, we're always doing that. We're always playing shows. We stay pretty busy. Is it true that you dated Janis Joplin in, in some part of your life back then? Yeah, yeah, I went out with Janis two or three times. No kidding. What, what was it like dating her? What was it like going out with her? What kind of person was she? She was a very nice lady. She was really sweet. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so it was uh, at least two or three times, huh? Yeah. Good. Uh, is there anything else uh, this interview that uh, that uh, you'd like to either ask me or ask uh, or just tell us about any uh, future uh, albums or any future? Well, we got an album that we're working on right now. Tell us about that album, the name of it, and where people yeah, can. Bruce too. It's the same idea as, as the first two songs that I was influenced by. I have some different gifts, but that. So it should be nice. And when do you expect that to come out? Oh, several months from now. Uh huh. And where can people find your your book, Raising Cain, The Wild? Uh, they can order it on the internet. Uh, this is probably the easiest way to get it. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell us about your book? Or, uh, well, it's a good book. I've, I've read it a couple of times and really enjoyed it. I don't think anybody that likes my music would like to speak to it. Uh, is there one rem uh, memorable story or incident that you, uh, you know, discussed with uh, Mary Lou Sullivan over the years that, that people could really take home with them? About oh, I thought, well, the whole book is interesting. 
I can't think of one thing. The whole book's interesting. Well, we love Highway 61. What's, what's one of your favorite songs you've done? Well, that's one of my favorites. Oh, good. <laughs> we always close with it. Well, I, we just played that one. How about another one that you love? Uh, be careful of the fools, real good. Uh -huh. How about a Panini Girl? You like that? We can make it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play a couple more songs, and we're going to play some other great uh, things as well. It's been a privilege and honor to have you here on uh, WPAT with Teddy Smith and Bob O'Brien. Any last uh, words of uh, wisdom that you'd like to give us about your appearance on uh, the David Letterman show or Paul Schaefer? What was that memorable experience you had on that show? Well, that was a lot of fun. We've, we've been on a couple of times. Dave's a real nice guy. I mean, I'm pleased to be on that show. You enjoy uh, being interviewed by David? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure he is. Isn't he funny? Yeah, he's a good guy. But he's, in, he's down to earth, isn't he? He's a really... Very really, nice guy. Very nice. So you, what you see off the air is what you get in person, too. Yes. Uh, my good buddy Ralph Romeo to my right microphone wants to ask you a question. Ralph? Let me just turn on the mic. Hold on, Ralph. i got to turn on your microphone. Go ahead, Johnny, Johnny Ralph Romeo here. I want to ask you, when you were playing Woodstock back in 69, did you realize at the time what an event it was? Or, in fact, was no. it just another, was it another concert, Johnny? Yeah, it was just another festival. We were coming in in the helicopter. You could see how many people there were. We knew it was going to be huge. And you knew, you knew it was going to draw that many people? When well, you no, saw we didn't. Uh, we sure didn't. Because when you saw that, that, that crowd, it must have taken you back. Because, uh, because oh, it I was. Think, it was unbelievable how many people were here. And this is the question that everyone asks. Was, aside from yourself, of course, was Jimi Hendrix the most gifted you've ever seen or perhaps someone else? I thought he was. Yeah, I did. He was just unbelievably good. Just your most natural, naturally gifted guitarist you've ever seen. Oh, yeah, he was unbelievably good. And, of course, your brother is up there, too. Am I right? Oh, certainly. <laughs> well, That's listen, uh, thank you, Johnny, for uh, coming on the show tonight. And uh, how's your, do you still have a helicopter today? No, no. <laughs> you think you're getting one again or not? No, I don't like helicopters. They're scary. Oh, well, <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Hope you can make it down here one night with us. And I want to thank uh, Jim. I know you're listening. Jim Petreca. Jim Petreca. Teddy Smith to Jim Petreca for booking this show tonight, my producer. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Johnny Winter. And uh, anything else you'd like to tell our audience tonight? Yeah, just come up to me, please. And have a good time. Thank you. All the best to you and your brother, Edgar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>